Well, 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 if it isn't the other black guy who grew up here. No, no, no. In this town, I'm the black guy, and you're the other black guy. No, man, in this town, I'm the black guy. When white people see me coming in this store, they get scared. Yeah, when white people see me coming into the store, they run, okay? Wow. Yeah, these are my white people. Go get your own white people. <laughs> you crazy. Welcome to another edition of What the Hell Happened to Them. Of course, your buddy here, Pat Scale, along with Jumpin' Jiminy Jackery. Uh, we Beckman. have a Jiminy, we can't say we that. We do anymore. have a Jiminy. We have Jiminy intern the intern Jiminy. now. Jiminy the intern is going to be taking our phone calls, so if anyone wants to call on in, go ahead. Our number is uh, whatever's at the bottom of the screen. And then, of course, we have the wonderful Van Lev Van Rensselaer on the audio boards, making sure our levels sound pretty great. But we have a special guest today, wonderful Mr. Jeremini of Blog. PaulJeremini.com. Mr. Jeremini, thank you for joining us today. I'm glad you can remember my blog. Yeah, yeah, it's very good. so legit. It is. <laughs> All right, Joe, what movie are we watching today? Grown Ups. Grown Ups? Joe, can you give us... 2010 smash hit classic. It was actually a huge hit. <laughs> it's, it's the next movie that's going to be released on Criterion. Did you know that, Joe? That is... A uh, good segue into a movie that's actually being released on Criterion for S- Sandler's sake. Yes, yes, the, punch the wonderful punch truck love. But Joe, can you give us a plot description of Grown Ups, please? Well, since it is so fresh, mm-hmm. it is so fresh. Yes, we can we, can we just we, get we had to watch this movie just before this recording because uh, Mr. Jeremy was not. We did not communicate well with him. About how the podcast works. I need fresh Fred, takes. They're going to be hot takes. So Joe has now watched it three times. I have watched it twice. But Mr. Mr. Jeremini is, is fresh off the boat with it, so, so he's ready to go. Grown up. Yeah. So Joe, give us the plot summary now that it's fresh in your head. <sighs> Sandler and his crew of fucking assholes are best buds for life, except for Rob Schneider. And they're all, they're all, they all love to play basketball and their coach dies and then they're all getting back together 30 years later, right? 30 years, I think it was Yeah, it's around there. Uh, which makes them all feel so fucking old. I don't want to talk about this movie anymore. I have too many grown-ups. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's okay, Joe, because I think your plot synopsis went a little long. The, what you, what the correct answer was, was five minutes of silence. Because this movie does not have a plot. Mm, this movie just true. kind of happens. And then it's over. Yep. And then you're glad that it's over. It's poor Steve Buscemi. Mr. Cherimini, as a person who has not watched many Adam Sandler films, can you give us what you thought on this movie? It was, it was sort of like Sandler went on vacation. And the news, or like the documentary crew came along and just taped it. Famous documentarian Dennis Dugan. Yeah, that's that's so that's actually been a long-standing joke of this movie, Mr. Jeremy, when it came out six years ago. Everybody just said, "Oh, Adam Sandler need, got paid twenty million dollars to go on vacation." But that's your actual takeaway from this movie. I'm like new to this. You're outside of this war. world entirely. I like so, to like think. just coming in. That's yeah. my take. Right, exactly. Right. So that's how that's how readily apparent it is, and you can see it in some scenes, like when they're dancing, and then when they're just sitting in lawn chairs, just making jokes. Like they're like, "All right, today we're not gonna, we don't feel like doing anything, so let's just sit down." Roll some cameras and we'll see what happens. You know. Do you think they had a script or they just went somewhere? Joe, things. Do you know if they have a script? The man who does the research. Thanks. <laughs> you don't know. I just didn't know you came across it as you were walking uh, around. I think I'll, there's. I'll I think there's a little bit of a script. I mean, there are definitely some character arcs in here. I would say too t- many. This movie has like f- like too many characters. This movie's like fifteen characters, and then they add Rob Schneider's daughters, and I say, no, stop, please! I can't keep track of them. Each family has too many people, and then they add the bullies. Then you know Colin Colin Quinn. Colin, Colin Quinn you think is enough, but then they add the the weird cross eyed guy and Steve Buscemi, and I just can't. I just, and then Tim Meadows, you can't keep track. There's like thirty characters in this movie, and they all do something. There's too much. There's too much in this movie. 
I'm actually hard pressed to remember any of the characters. Right. <laughs> That's <laughs> you just watched this movie. <laughs> 20, like twenty minutes ago, no, this movie even. ended. No, one of them was Robbie because that wasn't original. Yeah, it's Rob Schneider plays Robbie. Who, who I feel bad for Rob Schneider for all this movie. I just want to s- yeah. say that this is... Oh, okay. This set is a 10% on Rotten Tomatoes. I thought it was one of his lowest ones. It's actually not one of his What's lowest What's lower ones. than this? Uh, the one we haven't done yet, The Ridiculous Six, has a 0%. <laughs> is that his way? I don't even think that would be possible. That means not one person, no. not even like an internet troll being like, this is the greatest thing since Citizen Kane. Nobody is, nobody's on board for this movie. I could put my blog on the you map. Know what's I'll lower... just give it a positive review. You could do it. You'd be that guy. Well, you have to watch Ridiculous Six. You... That's a movie we haven't watched that is yet. You could, you could just lie. No but... one will know. Just say you like westerns. <laughs> I like westerns. If I you like so... High Noon, you'll love The Ridiculous Six. It's just like Blazing Saddles. If you love The Forgiven, uh, Unforgiven, you will love The Ridiculous the Six. The Forgiven, I want Clint Eastwood to make that. The sequel? sequel. So Unforgiven. Yeah. <laughs> he meets the ghost of his dead wife. She's like, yeah, you're fine. I'm okay. I'm dead. I don't care anymore. <laughs> oh, thanks. That's so nice of you. Um, if you love The Searchers, you will love The Ridiculous Six. Um, how many How many, How many? many high-tier Rustins do I have? If you love Stagecoach, you will love The Ridiculous Six. All right, so want to go over the before we go into more thoughts on the movie? Do you want to go into the box office receipts? Yeah. Okay. So this movie cost eighty million dollars. Eighty million dollars. <laughs> so Mr. Jeremini, as a person, this place in one cabin. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Jeremini, as a person it's that that location. doesn't do much with movies, would you care to guess where all that money is going? Probably actor budgets, I guess. It's very much. I feel like actor it's a fifty budgets. million dollar Adam Sandler. Wow. And then he, he's, and then the he, rest of the movie. Trickles out the rest if of the If you had to guess before, 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 Joe unfortunately ruined it, but if you had to guess, Mr. Germany, what would you have thought the movie would cost? Mm, yes. I'm, like, what does this look million? like? 30 million? It yeah. seems like a budget film. Wouldn't that be great? But it didn't seem to matter because what do you think the movie made, Mr. Jeremy? Uh, yes. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, they made a sequel, so it had to have done okay. Had to have done okay, yep. So I'm going to guess like 200 million. Okay, Ms. Joe, what's the number? Well, domestically, it did 162 million. Okay. And uh, foreign, 109. So that's weird that he does so well in foreign markets as a comedian. Yeah. So that that movie, what did that movie? I got 170, 275 million dollars. Yep, right around there. <laughs> I mean, so so even though they put eighty million dollars in it, it doesn't matter. They over they more than tripled it. Also, all of can we can we just get really yeah. like up into that uh, advertising of the KFC bucket? <laughs> they were really on, into KFC the, in that on movie. The second watch through, you, I didn't you, notice. You made a comment yeah. about I just I, I just was like, why is there a KFC bucket now? Because they're just sitting in a cabin yes. and they're just walking around. Why is there a KFC? And then you're like. Just please tell yeah, me. Yeah, so, they, so I, get, I, I didn't notice any of the KFC stuff the first time through. It's subtle. It's, it's which not is not subtle. subtle. That's just that was my level of engagement. Like I guess Kevin James makes a KFC joke, and then he has the bucket. So then Joe's coming. I'm like, well, it seems like a thing where Adam Sandler was just eating some KFC at the craft services, and they're like, Sandler, we got to go for a take. We're losing daylight, and he's like, ah, oh, fine. And then he just brings the bucket. <laughs> Right in there with set. him into the scene, and then they find a way to make it work in the scene. Yeah, because uh, that would James be my guess. No, no in... Rob Schneider has. Well, no, Rob well, Schneider has the has the the, the yeah, yeah. ashes on ashes his hands, on the coach. and then Which he touches the chicken. Together, right, but that was a ca- that was a weird character scene for him too, where mm-hmm. like he was eating meat now for the first. He was like tired of who oh, he was. Yeah. So they even they even they actually got a little a little dramatic weight in it. I know it doesn't feel that way because this movie. It's they pretty really, much one note the whole time. And they don't let it sit... Like, that's that's a good point. I never yeah. even realized that. I know. Like it, it's really easy to miss when you have to do 30 of those <laughs> for right all the head. characters. Yes. Wow. I liked it when Mr. Wow. G- when we first start the movie, Mr. Jeremy. It just earned feel- 10%. <laughs> uh, I, I like it when Mr. Jeremy feels Wait. bad for Adam Sandler at the beginning of this movie. It's like... Yeah, <laughs> he makes a lot of money, but his kids don't like him. His They're kids, not his kids, yeah, him. his kids are shitty kids, <laughs> shitty, spoiled, entitled kids. But then, then, it, then, thanks to one weekend, their entire personalities are rewired. So, yeah. well done, Maybe cabins when you in get New England. Hit with a fucking giant stone by Selma Hayek in the gut. Your kid would turn around and stop being an asshole. 
Do you remember that scene? What? She yeah, just the throws a scene. fucking rock at her son. I and, don't. I remember she, her throwing a rock and being like, "Oh my god, I forgot what it was like to have fun." Yeah, but I don't remember it hitting somebody. Yeah, it is, that's a no. joke. And, you and, you remember this? Yeah, child abuse is a big theme. I've watched this <laughs> twice and I've missed that both times. And, and then the son's like, he just yeah. walks it off and he's like, "No, mom, it's okay. We just want you to have fun." It's really like I don't know if that was actual a joke or what, or if the kid was trying to make the mom feel better. Yeah, Mr. Jeremy was confused through most of this out. film if it were supposed to be a comedy, and I don't blame him. Like there are parts that are very dramatic. Yeah, and then there are like fart jokes. There are so many <laughs> it, stereotypes. Yeah, but yeah, you have these, these nice moments where like he lets the bad guy win because his life's mm-hmm. terrible, and like there's something with them playing with like the cups, right? Well, the that's, cup phones. That's the end of the movie. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying so you have like these nice moments, but then yeah, then you have people people falling into things with their faces, the, and Rob Schneider getting slapped with a banana for a, a lot of I the mean, movie. It was dehydrated. Banana. I feel really bad for Rob Schneider in this movie. Yeah. Who apparently none of his friends like him, which is weird because of the five people in this movie, the person that doesn't fit into this group is Kevin James. Yeah. Kevin James has no chemistry with the rest of these people. He's and it's, just... it's 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 extremely the one SNL one non SNL guy in this movie sticks out like a sore thumb. I wish Chris Farley were alive cuz he would have be been Chris in this Farley. he would have been in this movie and this movie might have been watchable. It would have been mm. I think it would have been a lot better. <laughs> cuz probably maybe was like this. a 15 20%. But here's the deal, right? Here's the deal. As much as I don't like this movie, I didn't hate it. It wasn't an abominable movie. I know, right? I'm getting looks now. I went into this movie expecting this movie to be garbage, and what this movie is is just nothing. It's just... Do you think, like, the It's drama? barely a movie. Like, I was expecting, like, another Eight Crazy Nights where I just couldn't watch it anymore. Uh, true. But this movie, ju- it's ju- it's bad because it doesn't it do along. anything. It doesn't... It just is there, and you're like, whatever. What a, it's, you can... Like, you it's, can almost, it's almost... It's almost... Yeah, anything. it's almost an Italian neorealist movie. <laughs> Wow. There's so many words Whoa. right. This Where, is a hot yeah, take. Hot take, please. <laughs> pew pew. It's almost. <laughs> See, it say is, that one more time. It is. Um, it is very nearly an Italian neorealist movie. If Adam Sandler knew what the hell those were, I would say that's what he was trying for. But what he actually was trying for was, I think, what Mr. Geremini stated was that he wanted to go on vacation with his friends and wanted somebody to pay them to do it. And so they just had a documentary you crew. You think he's trying to do a Fellini movie? Like, no, that's what I got. <laughs> and Fellini's not an realist. Let's not get crazy here, okay? <laughs> let's let's not look like idiots. No. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, it's very clearly not intentional, but accidentally this movie got so close to it. Mm-hmm. It's really ridiculous. And it... Like, it's weird, because if it were, if it like, was, like, that extra eighth of a mile to a, a neorealist film, people would be like, oh, this movie's really good. Adam Sandler's getting out of his box. But because he couldn't put in any effort into this movie, it's just this movie that just hangs out there but makes way too much money. They just want you going blazing in. Yeah. I need, I need some definition <laughs> yeah. on neorealist. What neo, what happened, so essentially, so you have World War Two, and then everybody in Europe is super... Sad because mm-hmm. World War II was really depressing, this and so like what? Nazis to me. It's and so what the Italians start doing now because they have no money and no film economy anymore is that they just people random people just start taking a camera and just start filming everyday life. They're tired of the glitz and glamour of the Hollywood oh, style. Cinema verite. Yeah, but, but not in the documentary sense, in a narrative mm-hmm. sense. So they just like it, you have like he he said it feels yeah, like a documentary. Yeah, exactly. So like the famous one is the bicycle thief, where it's just a guy who can't find work because the economy is really bad, and like somebody steals his bicycle, so he can't get to the job he did have. That's and then what the movie's about. Yeah, and then he tries to steal like somebody else's bicycle at the end, and his son's like super sad, and that's what, and the movie's just watching him walk around town, be poor and and homeless, and not be able to afford his job. Two days and one night, right? Two days, one night is kind of like that. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little more drama heightened. Mm. Like the other one I'm thinking of is Umberto D, where it's just an old guy and he's just old and depressing. And then he spent like 30 minutes like watching like this maid just be a maid, and she's like cleaning the floor, and then like cleans the table, and then like washes her feet, and he just watched that a lot. That's what Joe Swanberg's doing. Like. Yeah, Joe Swanberg kind of comes close to it, but he's he tries like, to put like a little quirk in there and like a like, little let's comedy. Let's watch my baby be cute. 
See? In all five movies. <laughs> not a not a Joe Swanberg guy. That's just me, though. What, what I, I guess I like Jeremy? Do you think if they took yeah. out some of the comedy, it would get closer to that? Oh, my God. What? We should try to re-edit like this movie with none without the comedy. the comedy. I mean... That would, I, like, they're I'm just walking through that. woods. I would... Yeah. And they're, right, they're, like, playing at a beach. Take out the fart and they're, it's like a It's like a less depressing neorealist film. It's just like, here's every day. Like, you could make it look like this kind of... Like Errol Morris documentary, just like here it is, like a <laughs> D.A. Pennebacher cinema verite kind of thing. Do you think it failed more on yeah. the drama side or on the comedy side? I would what like would to say that this movie failed, but unfortunately it made way too much money for me to be able to it's, say that. It's a family dramedy. Where I feel like this movie is unsuccessful is one, yeah, on the drama side it failed because there's too many characters, mm. so you can't really enjoy yourself with any one storyline. Yeah, the, we really where, don't need the Kevin James character, like you said. Oh my god, Kevin James <laughs> is so, and everything, every time he does his bit, like the milk thing, where yeah. he like buys the milk from the like, Thing and cut that where out. the speedboat like mm-hmm. doesn't work, he's just not a good actor either. Like this is my other gripe against Kevin James, and I, we and I, I with him. I'm upset that he, like I feel like he accidentally got famous. Like it just, he just happened to you be. You think your buddy Ray Romano? I know he just happened to be friends with the right people, mm-hmm. and then they're like, "Hey, we like you. We want you to get famous." So, oh, here's a show on CBS that runs for way too long, and then he gets friends with Adam Sandler. He's like, "Oh, here's some movies you probably didn't need to be in." My yeah, Adam Sandler's like my my friend who has your same body shape passed away to drug overdose. You you aren't into drugs. Yeah, right? <laughs> you're you're sober. Right, right, you're a regular dude. Right. All right, great. Yeah, get in this movie. We need a funny fat guy. We don't have a funny fat guy anymore. David Spade won't get fat. I keep trying to feed him food. He just won't do it. He's so short. But Chris Rock's great in this movie, though I think criminally underused. What's going with on David all Spade the hair in this movie? What with, Rock, with Schneider's with, hair yeah. and David Spade? Well, David hair. Spade's hair is doing what David Spade hair always does, so that's fine. Rob Schneider, I don't know, like they put a fake wig on him. That's part of his character because like he's like, yeah, he's like, so he weird has to have weird like this rat, like this, yeah, this pseudo mullet rat? going you call on. Him a rat? Yeah, that's not very nice. <laughs> like, so that's all right, and then yeah. Too many characters. I wish they then they kept at then they kept adding characters like it was drowning in like characters. Like Steve Buscemi just shows up in the third act. Steve Buscemi's <laughs> here hanging out. I got daughters now. I got to care about, and then they have a storyline. But we're already halfway through the movie. But you're setting up that now. Yeah. But then weirdly, for all the storylines that they have, it also feels like nothing ever got resolved. Like Mr. Germany, you were calling plot points throughout this whole movie, and they very easily could have done them. But then they did far less than that, we should, and then they just stopped. We should put together like a diagram of all the loose. Plot yeah, right. <laughs> That's not that. Just places you could have gone. Like I don't know. Like you're starting to hint at David Spade being like a lonely single guy, and then that never ever comes up ever. He just doesn't have his plot line ends up being he doesn't have sex with Rob Schneider's daughters, who don't show up until halfway through the movie anyway. Well, you know what? Yeah, this can all continue. Yeah, in the. I I I've seen it. Yeah, I think it's the far superior sequel. The grown up sequel. When I when I grown up, let's get the grown up first. The other thing where I think hurts the comedy is the editing of this movie because this movie feels so stilted most of the time, and I think it's because they do go on. I think it's because most of this movie is made up. Yes. So I think like alternate like oh. Improv this. Yeah, this, so I don't this, know if like they're all improving together. It doesn't feel like it, and I don't think they would do that because it'd be hard to get clean audio. We were talking about the Jonathan Lafgren scene where he's like the owl. It sounds like owl. Yeah, six. So like, I, like maybe like they had him do it like eight times, and then like when David Spade's like at the top of the loft and he's making like a vomit joke, maybe they had him do like eight different versions of that, and so that's why none of these scene none of these scenes are kind of flowing together because these actors clearly aren't talking to each other and. And the guy doesn't know when to cut and how to Say get this comedy. Say something funny, Spade. Yeah, like what you would have. What I think you should have done in this is just ha- try to have people in, in as close and as tight a shot as you can, and then you could just let them go on it. Mm-hmm. And then that would be like this kind of neorealist thing, right? Or this sort of this sort of verite comedy. Just let it Arsene like a mumblecore kind of thing. So good. Yeah, like just let them go at it and riff off each other. They kind of do it with the with when they're in the chairs, and mm-hmm. the chairs kind of works a little better. But not. But other than that, they didn't really get you an advantage of it. You mentioned a mobile movie. Yeah. And Sandler perhaps might be in a mobile core movie next year with that Noah Baumbach movie. He's gonna be in a Noah Baumbach movie. We talked, we oh, oh, with Dustin Hoffman and Ben the, Stiller. Yes. Oh, right, the one that had the Yiddish name. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a new title, but very interesting casting. That could be it, right? This could be Sandler again, being like, "All right, I'm bored now of doing these." Dracula movies let's too many Netflix movies so Mr. <laughs> Jeremini what Adam Sandler movies had you seen before this Billy Madison that's the oh, that's the yeah. only one I I might have seen another one but I can't remember it okay that's the only one but what I've did you think of when, when, when and where did you see Billy Madison 
I think I was very young. Yeah. Probably elementary school. Oh, too young. Yeah, that's yeah. Young. Yeah. Then. Yeah. So yeah. it definitely appealed to a middle schooler. Yeah. Uh, it was yeah. a humorous film as a middle schooler. I think that movie should have could have passed on an R. Like if they threw some fucks in there, that movie now I think could have been an R rating. Certainly a crude film. Very. Cr- There's a lot of like sexual things in there. I'm like, this is too inappropriate for. Thirteen-year-olds. <laughs> the all right, and so what was it like going from that movie to this movie? Well, this movie just wasn't like funny. <laughs> Maybe my I've like evolved. I like better humor now. But no, because we watched it no, recently. No, I think I think you're just on point where the movie just isn't funny. It, like, it's not. It's not us. It's it's, it's definitely the movie. <laughs> like so. Let, so here's my here's finally my my grown-up story. Right, it was that I was working at my at the day job I had back then. Mm, uh, there for a while. We had we had this kid who was like fresh out of high school and he was in between college, so he was there for the summer. And he was like, "Well, what movie are you gonna see? Any movies?" Well, he's like, "Yeah, hey, we're gonna do Grown Ups." And I go, "You gonna do Grown Ups?" Mm. He's like, "Yeah, you gotta see an Adam Sandler movie." What? Do young people like Adam Sandler? Yeah, that guy's really funny. All right, well, what, 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 what movies of Adam Sandler do you like? And he's like, "Uh." Like eight crazy nights, some bedtime stories, and I go, what? What about these movies? Because you've never heard of them. What? What? what, what, what <laughs> yeah. What, what about What about Happy Gilmore or Billy Bassett? He goes, oh yeah, those ones are all right, I guess. What? <laughs> all right. So what's weird is that, that people is people still like Adam. Sandler, like young people, Adam Sandler mm. still plays very much with the young audience, which is why I think he still gets to make these movies, even though as we get older, we find it getting tired and mm. stuff. So because we've seen this stick too long. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Or maybe, I don't know. Maybe he. Maybe I don't know. Maybe we're not. Maybe they're used to a lower quality Stan- Sandler, and then like so. Then when you get like the weird absurdity, and you're like, eh, whatever, Billy Madison, and whatever Water Boy, I don't care. They just they just want to. Yeah, well, I got to he. You got to see a Sandler movie, I just, and I'm like, this is this is how this man keeps making these terrible movies because you guys let him. You guys allow him to do it. I wish I had seen Funny People like because I would have been hey, did you see Funny People? He would have been like, I don't know what that is. Mm-hmm. That would have been funny. I so, should have seen Funny People too. I just, I just saw it. Well, before. Well, it's okay. It's fun. It was fun, to, fun discovery because yeah. now we're we're in the not fun stuff to watch. Yeah. So it was nice to have like a fun little break there. Ooh, we got some hard days. Ahead we of got us. yeah the next the next three we're not very excited for. So <laughs> the next let, three. I let me the rest of these. let me <laughs> let me read you a little article here. All right, from the Television Guide. All right, it's a story time with Pat. It's a new segment. <laughs> Kevin Can Wait, starring Kevin James, oh. is Did the name, to, is the name, you're of, treating us like a Sandler fucking movie, is the name of Kevin James' new sitcom, but it was CBS that couldn't wait to pick up the show, with 207 episodes of The King of Queens under his belt, has anyone, oh, wow. who, who here is, episodes? have you guys seen The King of Queens? I have not seen I've a seen single an episode. episode or two. I know that Patton Oswalt's in it. Patton Oswalt is like, Patton Oswalt and Jerry Stiller are the closest thing to a redeeming quality that show has. I won't call them redeeming My qualities because the scripts was... underutilize them. Mm. That show is abominable. That's like mm. 10 seasons. That like when people think of dumb bad sitcoms, that's the show they're thinking of. <laughs> and they unfairly attack Ray Romano's sitcom. The, when they really want to attack King of Queens. Is it everybody or everyone? Everybody. Everybody loves Raymond. Mm, okay. Yes. So Let's go on. So he had way too many episodes of King of Queens, so let's just point out that story. Seven episodes. James and his fellow executive producer, Rick Rubin, didn't have to go much of a hard sell before they even pitched the concept to CBS. Chief Lef, CBS Chief Les Moonves recalls Rubin saying, I, uh, uh, sorry, Rubin recalls of Les Moonves saying, I want it. I don't even know what it is, but I want it. <laughs> I like Kevin James so much and the American people need Kevin James so much, I don't care what the plot of your story is. Well, it's Kevin James, and he's a terrorist, and he's killing a bunch of Jews. Love it. Give me a full season of that, please. Let's... Is this really what this is going to be about? I'll no. No, that's not what the show's oh, about. Is a disaster. Let me tell you what the show's about. What is it... What it is, is the story of Kevin Gable... A newly retired cop who's suddenly spending more time around the house with his wife, daughter, Erin Hayes, of Children's Hospital. So you didn't change his Children's Hospital, yeah. like the, the like Rob that, show. Yes, on okay. Adult Swim. All right, all right. And their three kids. 
Kevin's time at home turns out to be tougher than anything he experienced on the streets. You know, as a police officer. So he's not delivering packages anymore with Pat Oswalt. No, no. Now he's a cop who apparently who who apparently lived in the nicest town ever, where nobody had any problems because his kids are way worse. Especially when his eldest daughter Kendra Taylor Spretler moves back home with a surprise fiance. Well, he is old. What? <laughs> Hayes, a married mom of two, didn't have to try too hard to relate to Donna. School. Uh, that's, just, that's not a very. That doesn't. I'm not going to read this. Not because I don't care about Cheryl Hayes, but because it doesn't disparage Kevin James. <laughs> Kevin also realizes that despite being a retiree, he's not exactly a senior citizen. Along with putting in more time at home, he will take on various jobs to fill his day. He'll be substitute teaching one week, which I've tried to do. It's very hard to get into that. Wait, you substitute? I tried to substitute. Whoa. It's really hard to get into that. This is another podcast. <laughs> He's a school mom. He's a bodyguard for a celebrity, Rubens explains. Wait, we have so all these... Hold Wait, hold on. So he's just going to be Homer Simpson? Yes. He's going to be Homer Simpson, but he doesn't actually have a job like Homer Simpson. Wow. Well, he's... Yeah. We we have we Simpson. have all these we kinds of have in America. <laughs> we finally have it. We have all these kinds of opportunities to show what James does best, which is he's a fish out of water. Which I will say, I can't think of a single movie where I've seen him be a fish out of water. Where have where have you seen Kevin James ever being a fish out of water? And why is that was do what Kevin James does best? I'm just blown away they didn't change his first name. That's <laughs> they like, knew. I guess, like, I wonder whose decision that is. Because if he's creating this show with his other guys, Kevin just like, yeah, we'll just keep my name. So in case people forget who I am, he can really be in the role. People really want America. me. People really want to see Kevin I James. Like, so I let's like just call me full Kevin Gardner. Immersion. Yeah. So, a uh, 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 full season or the? Did you learn nothing from Michael J. Fox's show? And Michael J. Fox is a thousand times more talented than Kevin James ever will you be. Know what I'm gonna tell you right now. What? That's NBC. I know, but then they don't C- make good decisions. CBS will look at NBC and go, "Oh, let's not do that," because we're because now they're a first place network because they have football in America and, and The Voice. So what are we going to do about it? Oh, well, let's do the same thing they did for a canceled show they had and then they couldn't get rid of. We have Big Bang Theory. We can do anything. They have Big Bang Theory. They have NCIS. They have Big Amazing Star Race. Trek? They will have Star Trek, but not on CBS. Yeah, it's going to be on some app. It's going to be on CBS <sighs> now or something. You have to pay five dollars a month. Which to is, watch which Star is, Trek. Which is unfortunately, well, they'll also have the Good Wife spinoff, which angers me to no end. Wait, there's a Good Wife spinoff? There's going to be a Good Wife spinoff, but only on CBS Access. What is it going to be called? The Bad Wife. No. Obviously. No, it, it, oh, follow, it follows... <laughs> it, <laughs> it follows... It wife. follows Christina Baranski's character. The Gooder Wife. Good job, Baranski. I don't... That would be awful. You know, Christina <laughs> yes. Baranski was in an episode of... Frasier. Always along, to along with Alan Cummings, who's also in The Good Wife. So when D- when David I. Pierce then went to The Good Wife, he's like, "Yeah, I saw both these guys, you know, when I went with Frazier, So here we are. Do you know what The Good Wife's like? We're into universe building. We are going to make yeah. the Good Wife universe. <laughs> the Good Universe. The Good Universe. Well, we found out last night, Mister Jeremy, that Kevin James. Via Ray Romano's character and everybody else, mm-hmm. in fact, also lives in the same universe as the nanny and Cosby. Oh, not the God, Co- yes, not the about. Cosby show, <laughs> the other show he did in the '90s called Cosby, where Felicia Richard was also his wife. Wait, this is a real. Th- yeah, I didn't know the Cosby verse. There's yeah, so Cosby has two shows. One of these, one of the '90s, but he has the same wife in both shows. But he has very different oh. lifestyles. Like in Felicia one, he's rich, Richard and one, he's poor. Is in Creed, right? Yes, yes, she is. Mm. Did you see so, Creed, Mr. Jeremy? So nope. Wonderful. Creed was a great movie. Wow, you, that's something you should not sleep on. That's that's uh, yeah. Good movie. Did you see Rocky? No. Mr. Jeremy, what's a movie you've seen recently? I saw Pop Star last night. Yeah. <laughs> like what? Like on DVD? With 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 Andy no, Sam, not, with Andy yeah. Sandberg. Not mine. Yeah. Don't, don't admit to that, please. Why why did you why did you <laughs> watch on YouTube? Why did oh, you okay, watch okay. Pop Star? Um, it's all right. I, li- I liked it. I do like Sandberg. I think he's funny. And yeah. I he's was told this film a... was funny. Who told you this film was funny? Online. I, I read it was it funny. It's got good reviews. I don't think that movie looked funny at all. Who's in that movie? Andy Sandberg and who else? Uh, it's the Lonely Island people. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't find those people. Listen, this is old crotchety Pat talking about. It is. I don't find those people Pat funny. Talking. Hot those takes. Are humorous. Yeah, no, so funny. you liked the movie? It was, it, yeah. I'm did, not blown away. Did but you I did like laugh. it more than Grown Ups? It was more interesting than Grown Ups. 
It, it had, yeah. uh, it was, it was rated R, so they could do whatever they wanted. Oh, uh, okay. So is Grown Ups Grown- not rated R? PG-13. <laughs> really? Yeah? It couldn't get passed on a PG rating? There's a lot of adult stuff in this movie, though. It feels really? weird. There's a couple adults there. I feel like there are. What? The yeah, t- but they didn't really swear that much. So. They did not swear that much, no? That's There's true. No nudity, so I mean, you do have like really, twenty. There was a lot. You do of have butts. You have twenty kids running clothed around the butts, whole movie. Though. Clothed butts. No, there was no. Male David, asses. David Spade's ass is hanging out pretty, but they even talk about it. And you know what else was weird? There's gonna be a lot of scenes. I feel like people weren't in the same room as each other. <laughs> Wait, what? Like I feel like a lot of scenes people weren't like they kept oh, cutting like, like, cut between them. You just the like Louis C.K. in uh, American Hustle. When yeah, he's like, when he's like obviously not. Yeah, there. <laughs> it's really weird, and may, I think that also hurts the editing. But you know what was good in this movie? As much as I don't like this movie, I think the opening sequence, even though I they were trying to be funny and they weren't funny, I at least like with the basketball game. I like that they were trying to like explain who these characters are in a nutshell. Do they put their names on the screen for you? Yeah, I know, but but like not like so. but like you see like their personalities and how they're playing the game of basketball and how they're adding to the crowd. So it's kind of like the big chill, but not as brilliant or in depth. Wow, <laughs> you just compared you this know, to the big. I said, I love it. Kind of- <laughs> it's a neo-Italian like, realist movie. If you can copy from the best, you can at least yeah. get okay. Yeah, right. So like, I think like that feels like a moment where somebody tried in writing the script. How are we gonna introduce all these characters really quickly? All right, here's a great way to do it and set up this theme of this basketball game. So that's fine. Do you want to talk about your favorite joke in the movie with the turtle? I so I legitimately <laughs> laughed at the turtle joke. I, the only movement moment I laughed. <laughs> When I, and I think like they <laughs> made it up too. Joke. Like I think like David Spade went up there and he just made a turtle joke. And they're like, oh well, let's get a let's, let's get an insert of the turtle. And then they have this hilarious like zoom into <laughs> a very clearly plastic toy turtle, and it's so tiny and small. It was just really funny. It just hit me out of nowhere because this movie had been so boring for so long. And then the David David Spade of course gets a good joke in there. He just and, didn't want to get wet. Yeah. And then I and I like I like I when Chris didn't jump on yeah. the tiny turtle and I'm like don't do it. Like and I like yeah, like his delivery too. Like he's like this is this high pitched voice and he's just like ah. And I also like when Tim Meadows and Chris Rock are going at it. Yeah. On the basketball court, like I'm, look, I'm the only black I'm guy. the other black guy here. People <laughs> run away from me. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. So like so they're okay moments in it, and of course none of them come from Adam Sandler, and certainly not Kevin James. And Rob Schneider I'm could have to take the shot at Sandler. I mean. Hmm. He's he's trying. He, yeah, he's not trying this movie. He's not trying this movie. All right, I I will always <laughs> praise him when he tries because he's good when he tries. But when he doesn't try, I'm gonna call him on it. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, Adam Sandler, if you're listening right now. He's and, a big fan of. And Le- Lev is telling me he's not listening, but he might listen at some point later on. So he likes. Yeah, he's a big fan of things with his name on it. <laughs> I like, and Adam Sandler is once again playing like a rich guy. Do you think he likes doing this so he can just be like on a really nice set? Well, I've never seen him. This is well, his house. Yeah. We still Same have room. the cobbler to watch. That's right, that's right. Which, did he write the cobbler? No, uh, J- it's a Jason Reitman. Yes. Yeah, no, no, no. Cobbler's Jason. not Jason Reitman. Sorry. Wait. Oh, go on. Okay. Oh, was so, it J- someone directed that that was a little prestigious. Oh, Wait. it's the guy from the station agent. Who's that guy? That doesn't feel prestigious. Uh, Mr. Jeremy, while Joe's looking that up, of the five main characters, which one did you find the least offensive? <laughs> I'm hard-pressed to remember any of their names. <laughs> so I'm, I so would say... Go by hair color, then. You know, Adam Sandler's probably the least offensive. Cause yeah. He's definitely trying to work... With the other characters and not, like, show off that he's yeah, this guy. Yeah, right. Like, I have some of those complaints in the beginning of the movie when he's still at his house, his rich house. Like, when he's like, get kids, you've got too much screen time and you don't, like, appreciate the little things. I'm like, oh, I'm like an old man because I have the same complaints that younger people that Adam Sandler does. Like, he's trying to connect with his yeah. kids and satisfy his wife. Right, yeah, he's... He, well, he's like a good I'm, glad, I'm glad the main character is the most human of the characters. I want to ask you both yes. this question. Yep. Because I have it right in front of me right now. Mm-hmm. What are the names of these characters in this movie? Yeah. All right, what? all right. Adam it? Sandler's character. All right, that guy, oh, no. they say, is it like, yeah. Lenny? Is oh, okay, it Lenny okay. something? Because yep. they say, like, Lenny 80 Fader. times. Yep. Okay. All right, all right. Yeah. Kevin James. I couldn't no could tell no you. No clue. His name is Eric Lamansoff. You know what's going to be good? I'm going to ask you yeah. after we watch Grown Ups 2. Yeah, no. <laughs> Eric. Eric. That doesn't even sound right. Yeah, I don't think I, he, they ever said his name. All right, all right. Ready for this one? Yeah. Chris Rock. <laughs> <laughs> no. Chris. Mi- mi- Chris. Mr. Meyer Rudolph. 
Kurt McKenzie. Kurt? I got the C right. You did have a C. That's good. All right, all right. David Spades. Uh, Randall. No, it's, that's the Robbie one. No, Rob no. Schneider oh, is Robbie. You're right, you're right. All right, there you go. Okay, but David I'm Spade. Uh, right, we'll go Randall. No, they can't have two R's. M- M- Mitchell. You're right, they can't have two R's. They can? <laughs> they can't. Okay, yeah. Mitchell. Is it Mitchell? Oh, no, a little close there. Ma- Malcolm, Michael. Oh, oh. Yeah? You're on, the, you're on the right track. Matt? Is it Matt? Mm. Mickey. Mitch? Mm-mm. I said Mitchell. Get, get in, get yeah. in. You're not going to give me Mitch? Falling off. All right, what is it? What is uh, it? Marcus Higgins. Marcus? Marcus. Marcus? All right, all right. Do you want to, okay, do you want to do the wives? I absolutely know yeah. no wife's name. I barely know the actress's name. I know I, Selma I Hayek and Mario yeah. Bello. And Marlene would call no Mario Bello because you said her name like eighty times during the movie. Because it's just weird that she's in this movie. Because you didn't you didn't know if she was a good actor or not in this movie. Uh, yeah, I just I, Selma Hayek. We, you've heard her, but, well, but it wasn't Selma Hayek. It was Selma Hayek, and then she had like another last name because maybe she got married or something. What do you mean? In the credits of the movie, it's Selma Hayek, like oh, protest yeah, or you're something. Right. I think she got married. She did. What movie she was in that was really bad and it's not her fault was that Puss in Boots? No. She was in that? Oh god. Only her voice though. Oh that's good. <laughs> what was that? The counselor. She Remember that is. movie? That Tom McCarthy movie? With oh, ma- with maybe yeah. with maybe yeah, Michael with Fassbender the, not, or something. Tom McCarthy. Yeah. yeah. It's um I, I know you're it's not Tom McCarthy though. Tom McCarthy is actually the director Who's who Tom McCarthy made the station agent? The Cobbler. Oh. Then Spotlight. R- who's the guy? Who's the writer, McCarthy? Who's the McCarthy? He does, like, The Road. Cormac McCarthy. Cormac McCarthy, which should be an easy number. That movie was... that. I don't think Cormac McCarthy can write his own movies. I think he has to write a book, and then somebody has to adapt his movies. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's a terrible screenwriter. That... Because I don't... Like, that movie had less of a plot than Grown Ups. Yeah, that's what, that's what we're talking about. That's Selma Hayek's in. And they kill her off. I feel bad for Selma Hayek. I wanted to... That was one of the bad movies I wanted to watch with you. That movie was so awful. It's so awful. So and even... And more bad. stuff happens in that movie than Grown Ups, Mr. Jeremy, but there is less plot in that movie. Mm-hmm. You're talking about The Counselor? There is yeah. Like a, I've seen this film. There's what a, did you think of The Counselor? Why have you I seen that movie? You know, because nothing, nothing happened. He, was, he, 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 like, he, like, he, like, he, like, he, like, begs at a priest at the end of the movie, and the priest is like, yeah, you fucked up, and now your life's awful. Deal with it. <laughs> Michael Fassbender goes to talk yeah. with this guy to buy a diamond, yeah. and that scene goes on for, like, 12 minutes. Wait, They're well, just well, talking with... The, their, like, like their was it Bernicio Del Toro? Like, he's in there with, like, his weird hair and stuff, and, like, Cameron Diaz has, like, that, sex with a car. Bernicio Del Toro is not in that movie. Who is it? It's the guy from No Country for Old Men. That's not... Be, that's Arbor not... Oh. Uh, I saw it because Oof, the I trailer it. made it Next look very action. I got that just day. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I think I've confused it before, too. What? I signed it for an action film. That's what the trailer made me think. That, was that trailer promised trailer. definitely a lot of things that were There's not like in that Mexico movie. The one yes. scene with the bikes, with, where the guy puts up the wire. Yeah. Like, oh my god, that scene goes on forever, and I'm yeah, like, why am I watching this? Setup. And then he takes his helmet, and I still don't know why he wants his stupid head. I don't mm. know what the point of, what is happening in this movie. It's so much nothing is happening in this oh, movie. That movie is an For no reason. Watch. And there was like two cheetahs or something, jaguars running around like, is this a metaphor? I feel like this is a metaphor. Cameron Diaz. But it's not taking off. Yeah, and then Cameron Diaz is a five minute monologue and then the movie's over and you go, we're done? Yeah. Nothing, nothing resolved. Nothing happened. Yeah. How do we, why are we complaining about the counselor? Salma uh, Hayek. I would know nobody's, I'm surprised I know Lenny's movie and I probably wouldn't have known Adam Sandler's movie if I hadn't watched it a second time. Mm-hmm. Cause I just, cause they're, they're themselves in this movie. You care about their names, right? Yeah, like, I just like, oh, there's Kevin James doing Kevin James stuff. All right, great. He's got a bucket you on his head. their names? I just told great. them to you. Mar- <laughs> Marcus. Marcus Higgins. Wasn't there an Eric? Eric. Eric. Okay, okay. Kevin James. And then Curtis. Right. Yeah. No, what was Adam Sandler's character? Was Lenny. It? Lenny Fader. I don't, I don't think it was Curtis. Was it? It's no, Curtis. Yeah, it definitely starts with Seven C. C. We know it's a C. <laughs> Curtis is pretty good. <laughs> right? And the Chris Rock, like, being a homemaker thing, that never resolves. And then it looks like there's going to be a storyline where he's, like, hitting on, okay. like, the babysitter, and then that never goes anywhere. It's Kurt. I'm upset Kurt. about was, the Chris right Rock homemaker yeah. thing. Because if, yeah. if the if the genders were swapped, yeah. everyone would be complaining. Yeah. <laughs> but because the genders are swapped, yeah. it's supposed to be played off as funny, but it's not funny. Yeah, I think uh, Adam, Adam, Adam Sandler very much goes for the low-hanging fruit here. 
in this movie because I think he didn't want to put too much effort into his, I like like I think like it's like like in March he goes to the studio and says hey I want to f- go, I'm going to New, New England this summer with my buddies can we make a movie there and they're like yeah sure do you got a script and he goes do I need a script yeah you need something all right fine and then like in April he wrote he just crapped out a draft he's like hey I take this and they're like yeah we don't need to see it we just needed to know there was one go off take all of our money mm. he even ended up with Colin Quinn was in this movie I like Colin Quinn no McDonald's member. Like, no McDonald's in for five seconds. Butt, right? I wish No McDonald got to actually do something instead of just have a butt. <laughs> See, there's a lot of butts in this movie. Yeah, but Colin Quinn's good. Like I said, I saw him in Girls. He was good there too. I like Colin Quinn doing more stuff. Mm-hmm. That's pretty sweet. I do, I do feel bad for Rob Schneider really a lot. In this I movie. Like my notes. My first note yeah. is slam dunk Sandler because like I don't know why Adam Sandler's speaking at this this funeral. I don't know why these five people oh, the who funeral. clearly live in different parts of the country and don't talk to each other that much anymore. I don't know why they care so much about their elementary school basketball coach. Yeah, yeah, you won the state championships and blah blah blah. They needed a MacGuffin, but like it's been thirty years. You can't still care about that at all. It's weird. I don't even know if they were friends through high school. Like, I don't know like, how that happened and stuff. And then they're just like, old times, here we are at the cabin. Do you think it might have been better if yeah. it was a high school championship? Yeah, I think that would have been way better. But I don't know. Like, and let's talk. Where's the Joe, Joe, can you hand me the movie the, real quick? Because mm-hmm. this really bugged me. Here's the tagline of the movie. Boys will be boys, some longer than others. That tells me like these are like a couple of like a, like a misfits that never grew up and now they're back together and like they're getting childish and wacky again and then they need to learn to grow up. That doesn't happen in this movie. Their lives are pretty much together. They have like a couple of small things like Kevin James wishes he were more successful and Chris Rock riches, wishes his family would take him seriously. But like none of these people are man children. Even Adam Sandler, who's made a career out of being a man child, isn't really a man child. He just wants his kids to be less spoiled. So. I really met this tagline is just deceiving is the point of my story is that I'm lied to by this movie I like how you're showing it to and the even audience the one, <laughs> yeah even the one character who could have grown up really didn't change throughout the film yeah David Spade needed to grow up the most maybe he didn't do anything he was just he was like yeah I'm wacky and I got the best lines in this movie PG-13 for crude material including yeah. suggestive references language and some male rear movie <laughs> it says that? yeah yeah well I'm glad that, they got a, that gets PG-13 movie? are you glad we watched some Blu-ray? Yeah, I'm glad we got to see that in high quality. That was super Solid. important. It was actually cheaper than the DVD. Yeah, and the, and and just like the last movie, we, well, no, well, no, bedtime just like, stories? yeah, just like in bedtime stories, this movie has just no subtext. Oh yeah, whatsoever, Mister Jerry. Did you know this was a Germany? How you got told everything? Before? You would ask a Staring question, the and then they would immediately answer it for you. Which was nice. I didn't. Yeah, know yeah. <laughs> this was written by two comedy fresh former SNL writers, Sandler and Jack Garrett. Yeah, I think Sand- Sandler right. put like thirty minutes into the script, mm-hmm. and there. I think Sandler has like a robot that makes a movie based on all of his old I movies. I really don't Sandler know why not. he hasn't made his yeah. slam dunk Sandler movie though. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, I don't know what does that mean. Like, you just what does that mean? I just wanted to make like he's a basketball star. Yeah, his luck. He wants to play basketball again. He loves basketball. The guy should just make a basketball movie. He, he already he this is his basketball movie. No, Are but you I want sure? him yeah. to be, like be like, oh man, I was the best basketball player ever. So just just so he can have even more fun on set. <laughs> <laughs> but then, but then you know the good thing with the subtext, aside from the fact that we learn about these terrible father daughter relationships that Rob Schneider has. <laughs> Is is that then? Then everything kind of gets resolved extremely easily, mm-hmm. right there. Then they all hug it out, and then they have a basketball game. I felt when they hugged it out, that's yeah. it. You can end the movie, you, right? Like right around the movie there. has twenty more minutes. Yep. After all the plot lines are resolved, except for Adam Sandler and his son, which I forgot wasn't resolved mm-hmm. until they resolved it. And then there was a minute left of the movie, and everybody ran quiet. Steve Buscemi was continue. Steve Buscemi just really must really like Adam Sandler because I don't know why else he would want to be They're in these friends. movies. He must be. Uh, That's all. There is one uh, yeah. little plot point where they put Sandler's uh, older son or whatever yeah. and Kevin James's daughter. Da- no, I think it's his younger son and Kevin James' yeah. daughter. And they were holding hands. No, and I'm like, oh, and you're like, oh, that was a plot point that's supposed to happen? From? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what your goal was there. They kind of hint at it like a little bit when they're at the water park maybe. Or they, I remember them Should doing they? it. Yeah, yeah. I remember they did it earlier in the film. Like, oh, is that going to go somewhere? And then it didn't. And then it did at the end. Mm. But one last thing before going, I want to talk about the third act of this movie, which is the basketball game, mm-hmm. where there are no stakes 
whatsoever. Yeah, they're just playing like, for pride. Like, yeah, like, thank God Colin Quinn won, because Colin Quinn is, is the hero of the third act. He's the one who needs it more. Mm. If Adam Sandler and his friends lose, oh, well, they go back to their great lives. Adam Sandler goes back to his great Hollywood mansion with his maid and his two kids and his hot wife. Must be tough to be Adam Sandler. If they won, they wouldn't yeah. have learned anything. Right, like, that's... And, and I like, still don't think yeah, they Yeah, right, and then more importantly, then it's just watching them play basketball. Like, it's not until the very end where the guy's like, all right, next shot wins. It's not until the very end where, like, you even know what the rules are. How do you know when somebody's winning or losing? It looks like Adam Sandler's team is killing it for the entire time. It never once looks like they're going to lose, so you're never like, uh-oh, I hope they win this game even though there are no stakes. No, they're clearly going to win. They're clearly better. I just want to add one yeah. thing to the Kevin James hate yep. where he makes the joke where on St. Patrick's Day he stuck into his... Uh, bedroom and his wife was sleeping and he's like we had sex and she didn't wake up and we just I just yeah a lot of awkward moments in this movie uh, yeah definitely a lot of cringeworthy moments really in this movie didn't and to nobody wanted that. to talk about it at all it yeah really I'm not disgusting Kevin James why why must you do these things to us we just want to live a happy life I mean, and enjoy the has, world I think he has some pull where he could have been like I'm not going to say that I think I think that's one of the improv lines that's a line he improv it's it's disgusting. All right, that's just five of them sitting on a set and they're all on one angle. That's total improv. Mm-hmm. That's not scripted. Yeah. It's not scripted until Rob Schneider shows up. All right. <laughs> Any final thoughts, Mr. Germany, before you before we head off? Any last thoughts on this movie? Any last thoughts there, on your first podcast experience? There are parts where I laughed at this film. Yeah. Uh-huh. But it wasn't it wasn't a great film. It wasn't a terrible film. Uh-huh. I laughed. It's very middle of the road. It's, yeah, it's a nothing movie. It's like the white bread of film. Yeah, exactly. It's not awful. It's not abysmal. It's not the counselor. It's, it's just, it's it doesn't carbs, do anything. Yeah. White bread. Mr. Germany, that's perfectly stated. That is, that that is good. Bread. That's great. Joe, you have anything you'd like to say? Um, I just, I'm just, we're, we're back. We, we, gotta, we, gotta, we, got some, we got a tough road ahead. We got some rocky roads It's not good. Yeah, so this, unfortunately, we've, now that we've done funny people, we're sort of at this career now where I'm saying it's not only getting lazy, but like getting to do his own projects. And he go into the and holding, pulling the strings of the theater. So now Adam Sandler gets to make call the shots on his boring films, so they get even more boring. Well, the next like, yeah. interesting one we have to look forward to is Men, Women, and Children. Yeah, so but I guess he. We, I don't know, there's a lot to talk about that movie because. Yeah. That, that movie, well, let's say that for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Let's say that for that. All right. So let's just my thoughts here. This is sort of the beginning. This is the beginning of this. Of, of, these are the movies I'm starting to remember now coming out and being like Adam Sandler. Why are you still making movies? So it's unfortunate. Now he's like he has too much power and he's letting it go to his head to make very nothing movies. So he can just make some quick money and hang out with his friends. I, get, I which I can't blame him for because mm. I don't know why you wouldn't want to do that. If you why would you put in the effort if you're, you're going to make two hundred and seventy five million dollars on a crappy movie? Like why put in the effort? Doesn't seem to matter. Mm-hmm. So. That's that. We'd like to thank Mr. Jeremini for coming on by and being our guest. We hope he had fun. Mr. Jeremini, would you like to tell us a little bit about your blog before we go? Um, it's a blog. I write things. Some of them are actually readable. Yes, Mr. Jeremini was very nice. He so, upsell it. Mr. Jeremini was nice. He, his blog <laughs> reviewed our first film, Real Love, which you can find oh. on our website, www.quixoticunite.com. <laughs> nice plug. Yes, yeah, so thank you for that. We'd like to thank uh, Jiminy, our intern, for keeping the phones uh, Jim, keeping Jim the phones Marie, alive. Jim, Doesn't look like Jim we got Marie. any calls again, but that's okay. We'll he'll be on the phones for a while. And Lev Van Rensselaer for keeping the audio levels Wait, he's fresh on and the sound phones for a while. Um, Why? Don't act surprised, Jiminy. We told you this. Oh. All right, you know. Well, I feel bad now. I might have said it at him if he wasn't listening. Mm. And then, of course, we'd like to thank Jackie Joe Vecman. So, thank you for watching. We hope you watch the next movie, Joe. Uh, just go with it. Just go with the, the movie I can never remember the title of. <laughs> the movie? Jennifer, that the Jennifer Aniston movie. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you all for listening. We hope you enjoyed Grown Ups not too much because you can. And if Joe, say good night. Good night. Get it because the pee's out. Because we get with all the jokes. That's pretty good. That's like grade A humor. It's actually like poopy. 
It's not like when you go to the store and you buy the grade B eggs. No. I bring I get the grade A stuff. Grade A Grade eggs. Eggs. Grade eggs. Eggs and frittatas. I can check my voice. You sound good. How do I sound? You sound terrible. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're not. Can I get like a filter so I sound like a robot? You, we can, we could do that, maybe. Mm, let's not do that. Oh, well, now you don't want it. I'm just curious what my options are, voice-wise. You got a lot of options. Wow. All right, here, Joe, here you. Jesus. Okay, I'm sound fine too. All right. 